Good afternoon, Sunland. There we go. Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Canon Creative Studio Woo! for an extraordinary panel this afternoon of uh, some really uh, talented artists of the choirs. I'm going to talk a bit about trauma uh, and art. My name is Jay Holman. I am a producer and director in Los Angeles. I'm also an associate member of the American Society of Cinematographers, and I'm Contributing technical editor of American Cinematography Magazine, and it's my honor to host this panel uh, with these incredible artists. I have immediately to my left here, uh, Mr. Brandon Loma, who is the director uh, of the film and our recipients of the 2009 Student Academy Award, and you were the original best supervisor for the piece, so this is so many It's an incredible resume. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us. It's an absolute pleasure. Is that loud? Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. And next to him uh, is also uh, one of the subjects and uh, director of the film, uh, Slava Miltia. Is that who it? Yes. Great. Right. <laughs> right. I'm nervous about that one for sure. Um, who is uh, an artist, a uh, Ukrainian Special Forces soldier and uh, weapons instructor? Yes. 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 No. And this is your first oh, yes. uh, Sitting uh, next to uh, Slava is our translator, uh, Patton. Thank you very much for being here. And next to her is Andre, the cinematographer of the documentary, of course, in the world. And you are an oil painter by trade. And this is your first time you have picked up a camera to work on the Yes. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get this right. Uh, and at the far end of the panel is Dr. Ben Lewis from the Huntsman uh, Mental Health Institute, who's going to be here to talk to us a little bit about uh, the use of art as a way of processing trauma. Okay, now that I got all that out of the way, I, I can breathe now, and uh, I'm going to have you tell me a bit about this film. Absolutely. So, Porcelain War is the story of three artists who decided to remain in Ukraine after Russia invaded. And they have continued creating art as part of their resistance against Russia's efforts to destroy the culture of Ukraine. And the incredible thing about them is that they're bringing beauty back into the world. And in addition to creating this art, they are fighting. And as you heard, Slava is in the Special Forces, and they're using everything have whether it's art or weapons to defend who they are and bring beauty back to the world. How did you get involved? So I have been working on another project um, with my producer and creative partner Anela Sitorska, who discovered the porcelain figurines that Slava sculpts and Anya, his wife, paints on Google. And when we saw these, we thought this is just incredible. And so we started connecting together to work on an animation project. And then the war broke out, and we found out that they were okay, but that they were staying, and they were continuing to create art, and that they were there also to fight. And the four of us discussed this would just be a remarkable opportunity to chronicle their lives and their creativity despite the war. So, what inspires you in the midst of this atrocity, this war that has broken out? What inspires you to continue to make art during this conflict? Війна триває і триває постійно руйнування всього духовного. Щось має створюватись. Ми не можемо підновити людей. So the war is continuing around us. There is lots of destruction, and we need liberal people. Ми можемо насправді відтворити щось у зруйнення. Ми маємо створити щось нове. We cannot repair what was broken, but we can create something new. There's so, there's so many ways to, to... It's incredibly inspiring, the fact that we do that. Uh, and I'm, I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> Let me move down the panel just a little bit. Um, Andre, what inspired you to pick up a camera and start shooting? 
during this contract. This is my way of life. So this is what allows me to continue living the way I am. Когда я выключилась с камеры, и потом я бачу, как на сцене реагируют люди, я ощущаю обратный связок. Я понимаю, что это очень важно. Тим самим це дозволяє надихати мене, що це обітає. Я вважаю, що це екстремно важливо, і це ще дає мені причин, щоб продовжувати робити це. Ви були зв'язані з цими артистами онлайн, і спілкували Андре своєї фотографії в Zoom. Це правильно. Realized that even though we were thousands of miles apart, and we all spoke a different language verbally, Katarina was translating us for a year and a half, then we were already all fluent in the same language. We were all visual artists, and Andre and Slava had deep storytelling abilities in everything they had been doing for so many years. So to teach them cinematography and how to make a film, in a certain sense, they already knew this, and they merely needed to learn these tools. And then we collaborated to allow them to really personally and intimately share their everyday lives. Dr. Lewis, the, the idea of utilizing art as a way to process trauma is not new. But can you speak to what's happening here in this particular case, and utilizing art as a way to process the trauma of war? Sure. Events. I think of connection with your families and communities and country. I think of connection in terms of expressing this message and communicating it to others. And I see all of that as really a human process in a lot of different ways, it's like on a lot of different levels. And uh, so I'm just really fascinated by the process and also what it's been like for the two of you. Those are some of my initial comments. Brendan, uh, you were uh, telling me just before the panel started about uh, an extraordinary reunion that's just happened here. Uh, if you want to share that with the audience. Absolutely. So a couple of incredible things have happened. Sundance and us all being able to make this film, we have done the entire thing over Zoom, we've done the entire thing remotely. And two days ago, when we went to the airport here and the doors opened, not only did Anya and Slava and their god Frodo walk out, but Andre and his daughters and wife were all reunited here by this story being told and being shared with this community here at Sundance. And it was remarkable because one of the things that's in the film, the way they process what they've been through in this war is the figurines are in this movie. And one of the figurines represents their past, this beautiful life that they had in Ukraine before the invasion. The second figurine chronicles their present time and all of the trauma that's going on around them. And the third figurine is a dream of the future. And that's about togetherness, it's about healing, and it's about hope. And that is what this represents, being able to complete this story and share it with the world. So it is truly an honor to be here and actually realize the feeling of through making art. Which is really what this film is all about. 
Uh, and making the film also often uh, gives you a sort of objective distance over uh, what you're, the subject matters that you're dealing with. But in this case, you're deliberately going as deep and as intimate into the trauma and into the uh, conflict of war as possible. Can you speak a little bit to that contradiction and, and to the way that these artists process that trauma through this film? Absolutely. The way that they processed what's happened around them is really twofold. On one hand, they decided not to just focus on photographing this or that or war, is that's something that Anya has actually shared, is every missile is alike. But at the same time, they actually focus on finding beauty in the war, and it's something that Slava could actually speak to. I want to understand that just to make people smile again, this is the mission in itself. This is very important and this is quasi a there's a second side of it. As part of the film, um, there are cameras that are capturing uh, what the members of Slava's unit are doing, how they're fighting. And when we shared with them the film, it was a fascinating experience because when they return from battle, they have three days of decompression therapy. And they said that watching the film and seeing that their experiences were captured and were being shared was more release and better experience than any three days of therapy that they could have just by watching their story on the screen. In the time um, the, the men and women in my unit, in my military unit, told me that watching this movie helped them to return from the war, to return back from the battle, to peaceful life. And the commander who saw the footage that was filmed just like a couple of weeks before that, his body camps, he said that now I actually know what the documentary um, film is for. Andre, I want to ask, uh, as an oil painter, you have moved to this totally different art form with the camera. And how has your expression of your art translated to the use of the camera? story a little bit. So how cinematography influenced me personally. I am an old painter. And when the invasion started, this, this stage of the war, I could not paint anymore. I stopped painting. I, I was completely empty inside. I couldn't give anything to people at that moment. And when I had an opportunity to pick up camera, I felt alive, alive again. 
це теж ну, це інші енергетики. Це ж different type of energy. І я використовую всі мої навички для живописця. And I used all my experience as a painter. Working with light, composition. And what is most interesting, when we were almost done shooting the film, I was scraping some. Um, I was shooting at the process of scraping the old paints. And that moment was for the movie, for the film. And then I thought, wait, why don't I try painting a little bit again? And then I started painting. I felt that I am I have something again to give to people. Не займаюсь живописом почти два роки. А я не пейнтую на сто років. Моя моя живопись стала сильніше. But my paintings became more strong, more expressive. Андрій, я знав, що це відбудеться. Я був впевнений в цьому зараді. Андрій, я знав, що це відбудеться. Я був впевнений в цьому зараді. And his new paintings are incredible. Are there paintings in the film as well? The paintings do appear in the film. Yeah, what Andre has been able to do translating one art form into another is just unbelievable. And the three of us has had, despite the distance, such a close collaboration. We've communicated by making drawings and diagrams and sharing photographs and looking at Andre's paintings or Slava's drawings and sculptures. And using all of this art surrounding the film, we've always found a way to tell the best story, probably the best way possible for what's happening. If there's any particular message that you want an audience to take away from this film, what would that be? Як полягає в тому, що майбутнє в руках кожного з них. I hope that people will have hope after watching this film, that they will realize that the future is in their own hands. Dr. Lewis, can you speak to how creativity and art helps the process from? Yes, so how can creativity and art Thank you. 
Brenda, can you share some moments from the film or some of the, uh, without giving spoilers, I guess, but you know, some of the experiences of this production? Absolutely. I'll share with you guys an anecdote about how we started making the film, which I think speaks to the themes of this panel. When we first began, we were talking on Zoom, and we hadn't begun filming. And Anya was telling me that while they were in the war, they almost felt like they were on the moon, like they were on another planet. And at the same time, I was trying to figure out, gosh, how do we, how do I teach them how to use camera phones? And he's brought me back to what happened in Apollo 13, which is when they were stranded and they were out in the middle of outer space, and at NASA did a duplicate copy of every piece of the equipment in their DNA. So I thought, I'll send the cameras over, but I'm going to have an exact replica of the video camera, same camera, the same microphone, the same lenses. And so we sent those over, and we sent those over, and then I would create these two tutorials, and we would chat, and we would talk, 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 come up with creative ideas, and they were holding the same thing that I was holding. And all of a sudden we felt like we were in the same place, that we were seeing the world the same way, and that we were feeling the same feelings. And through that process, we were connected, and Anya said to me that a door opened, and a light was shining through, and that light was us creating something together. And in that way, making art, they weren't feeling so you know, Я могу сказать, что я брался за те пять разочных концепций. Я думаю, что я могу что-то сделать, но я не могу понять, что я могу сделать. Я думаю, что я могу что-то сделать, но я не знаю, что это будет. Но когда мы начали коллаборацию с Брэдом, за деки Ленинского, Це перетворилося на найбільш надихаючу послід в моєму житті. Because of collaboration with Brendan and his help, this turned out to be one of the most satisfying experiences in my life. Війна не зупинилася, вона триває. The war never stopped, it's going on. І наша ситуація, ми не можемо сказати, що ми маємо зробити щось таке, що допоможе нам пережити травму, яка була все в минуле. Травма повторюється і повторюється. І ми маємо постійно щось робити. Ми маємо рухатися шляхом мистецтва. Ми маємо постійно щось створювати, щоб не спізнитися. We must continue doing something. We cannot be late. We need to keep moving. We must be strong. 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 I can imagine being in the middle of this conflict and having Brendan reach out to you and say, do you want to make a movie about your art? I mean, how, do you, how do you find the time, how do you find the strength to, to undertake a project like this? When my um, when my comrades, my unit, uh, heard about this project, they told me I have to do anything possible to work on this. They gave me strength and also lots of responsibility. I lots of responsibility. Що кожного разу, коли я піднімав камеру, хтось піднімав зброю і замість мене. And the only way this movie could have happened, because each time we were lifting our cameras, somebody else was lifting the weapons protecting us. Кожного разу, коли я думав про прекрасне, наприклад, Катя, яку ви побачите у фільмі, воювали замість мене. Це 
і бідним дівчинкам належалося на безпеку замість мене. Це буде мені багато сил. Each time when I was thinking about something beautiful, uh, one of my comrades, uh, Katya, a, a tiny tender uh, girl, she, she's fighting, she's a fighter. She was fighting for me in my unit. And they get, this gave me strength and I didn't fall choice. Can you tell us a little bit about your personal part? Describe what it is and, and so we can have a, a, a visual understanding of, of your part. Ми працюємо над цим кооперацією з моїм дружиною, а ми вже досить. I work on this uh, in collaboration with my wife, Anya, for many years now. Я створюю персонал на форму. I make forms out of person. Різноманітні тварини. Of different animals. І Анна своїм розписом захає мій життя. And Anya paints them, and these paintings bring them to life. Each, each one of them is telling a story. We really hope that you will see this in the movie, that it's shown well enough, and it will be interesting for you. And in the film, we take it beyond this, an incredible company from Poland called Blue Blue Animation from three painted figurines that Anna Sava created. They drew 7,000 individually animated frames to bring these stories to life on the screen. So first I didn't understand why we would need to have animation in this game. But when I saw the result, I realized that this gave meaning to everything. How did you come to that idea of utilizing animation? When Aniela had first seen the figurines, it became immediately apparent that the stories Anya had painted and what Slav had created, they were almost already animated. It was just waiting in the porcelain to take life because there's so much personal history in them that adding time to the paintings will allow everything to be able to communicate all the different emotions they feel to the audience and make this very direct. And Brenda, we talk about the, the trauma of them being there in Ukraine in the middle of this conflict, but you are connected to these individuals and you form a bond with these individuals, and there's a trauma for you as well in the making of this production. If you want to speak to that a bit. In a sense for me, it put everything in my life into perspective. It became clear that as Slava's unit was fighting, or they were filming literally while air raid sirens were going off, bombs were falling nearby in the city, and they were in the midst of all this, and they were still making art. I, I, it put everything into perspective for me. I just felt that it was my, my duty to help them, and we felt like family. We felt like close friends. And seeing that they could continue finding beauty in life and sharing that with the world, it, it made me feel like I, there was nothing to complain about. And we just had to help. And so I felt a deep kinship and empathy, and I just wanted to be there with them in every way that I could, and making this film was what I could do. І, якщо чесно, ми не відчували, що це десь далеко. Коли під час нашої зв'язки недалеко прилітали ракети, і що знавалося в місті, і здавалося, що не разом. І я розумію, що це було просто. І я не розуміла, що Брендан був дуже далеко. Навіть коли наша міста була шелла, і експлозія була нірвана, ми розуміли, що це не дуже легко для Брендан Іго. Yeah, it's a whole new meaning to a, a missed call or a missed meeting and having a, a deep concern for your, your friends. We just wanted to be there 
we were constantly thinking of you guys, and we were in constant communication to just try to see whatever we could possibly do. And I think all of us just channeled our energy into what we could control. The beauty of telling a story or of making art is when you're in a situation that's happening to you, uh, you feel maybe powerless in a sense. But by taking up a camera or a paintbrush and making something, communicating, you have an autonomy again over your life, and that can make you feel hope. And I just wanted to help them do that part of their lives. And how was the post process handled? Uh, how was the footage it's got out of the country? Or? The footage was transmitted in a variety of ways. Luckily, there, we were able to actually get about 500 hours of raw footage out of the country, which is kind of a miracle. And we edited that um, over the course of the last year um, in Abbott. And what we realized is there was a deep naturalism and a deep intimacy and a deep sort of musicality to everything that they captured. And the edit was just inspired by all the rhythms of life inside of the footage. And so the post-process was very well between us and also Pinch No Worries in Australia and a company in LA, Imaginary Lane. But at the end of the day, everything that we did was just getting back to the core of their personal story and the art. And so the whole post process was just shaped around creating a transparency. What we decided to do, and what was part of the edit, was that the camera would be in the middle of everything that was happening. There was never any idea of observation. All long lenses were thrown to the side. We thought, and Andre and Slava thought, that you have to feel like you're in the Ukraine. You have to feel like you're coming over to their house and having a cup of tea or being there while they're making a big arena. And so everything that we did was just about creating that sense of being there and getting to know them. Yeah, and uh, so Brendan and Yela, I'm very grateful to you because we were um, sharing with you lots of very heavy things, uh, more heavy than that we could have shown in the film. Yeah, but I hope that was a little bit compensated, at least a little bit, by those beautiful moments that were in our material as well. Absolutely compensated. I think the thing about the film that, uh, that I think is deeply meaningful to me is that it spans the entire gamut of experience in life. Everything from being in the front line of the war to finding joy in art and nature and life in Ukraine. And we were so lucky to have a musical score by the Ukrainian group Dr. Bakma. So the entire score of the film is Ukrainian music and their music follows these emotions from very intense stories to the beauty of the seasons and nature and art and life. I was just making sure you didn't have a comment there. Was there any official support from the Ukrainian military or government uh, for this project? <laughs> We did this movie independently, but we had support from a military, and we, we were able to obtain the material that we would never be able to obtain otherwise. They shared with us. Yeah, 
and there is lots of um, footage of people who were training uh, on shooting ranges and so on. And they all um, agreed to participate in the movie and they all were assisting and helping as much as possible to this film. These people were in a really difficult situation. They were preparing for the battle that they never wanted to participate in. But they also were doing anything possible to help us with this movie. Slava, you, you play an extraordinarily important role in the Ukrainian military as a special forces weapon instructor. What's happening uh, with the war in Ukraine is civilians are joining the, the forces, and it's your job to train them. Is that correct? <laughs> We are fighting against a very strong enemy with much more resources, um, yeah, overwhelming resources compared to Ukraine. Unfortunately, our military is very small um, compared to the enemy. So it's, it's not sufficient to fight them. Can you speak both Slava and Andre uh, to the experience of being here now with this film and what that means to you? This is the best thing that could have happened to us. This is the best platform to show the film. And we could have not hoped for anything more than this. I really hope that you will see, like through my eyes, um, the, ex the experience. Uh, so the war, um, the war, um, uh, the war highlights bad and very good in people at the same time. И я хотів би, ми хотів би донести одну важливу річ, що те, що зараз трапляється в Україні, цього не повинно бути ніде. What is very, very important, that a uh, very important message in our movie, what is happening in, in Ukraine right now, it should not be happening anywhere in the world. I really want you to see our people. I was never this much interested in human nature. I was very more interested in beautiful nature, in architecture, art. But when the war started, I couldn't take my eyes off of the faces of my comrades. I, I never, I was never filming uh, when there was military operation because that was very dangerous. I didn't want to because I was afraid to make a mistake. 
єдиний випадок, коли я знімав дійсно на завданні з лінії фронту свої портрети. The only time I was actually filming something in a um, dangerous situation beyond the front line, that was when I was filming, filming the portraits of my families. Тут я сподіваюся, від вас, що це варто увагу. Ви подивитесь на них і вам сподобається. I, I hope that you will see what I filmed and you will like it. I hope you will share with me that this was worth filming. Of that I have no doubt. Brendan, you, this is a first feature for you, and very few people get their first feature premiered at Sundance, but have such a, an extraordinary life-changing experience on this. Can you speak to how that is for you, Mark? That's a terrible way to ask that question, but tell me how you're feeling. That is a great question. I realized, I realized one thing in this process, which is that to be a filmmaker it is is to be is to be a storyteller and to be a storyteller is to let the story find you it, it's this process of discovery was the exact reverse of what i thought it might be to make a feature film and i've written things and worked on things and done short films and this movie it came out in the most undeniably necessary way when we connected and when I knew what was happening there, I just felt that every single ounce of experience I've ever had in film needed to be poured into this movie. And it was an absolute joy, on one hand, to be able to bring in the knowledge I have and share it all together. And the other side of it was just to feel that we were connecting and helping. And it was, it was a beautiful experience. And I am so grateful that we have this platform for the story. I want to uh, give all of you a chance to ask any of the panelists any questions. Uh, so, to put you on the spot, which is my job here, uh, I want to um, open it up to the floor and see if anybody has any questions. Don't everybody jump at once. Yes. So if you didn't hear that, the, the question was, what was the process of selecting the music? Um, Absolutely. Slava had shared with us some different music from Ukraine, a whole range of different things that you guys were listening to. And Stafa Bracha, this band that is absolutely remarkable, and they're touring the world and doing a lot of proceeds of their concerts to musicians who are fighting. They're just incredible people and great artists. We play their music with our footage, and we just didn't stop. We literally cut the entire film to their library of music. And at a certain point, we realized, okay, wait, we're like completely married to the score. We better reach out to them. And they were so generous to grant us access to their entire library, and it became the spirit of the film, and vice versa. It was a perfect marriage, and it had incredible authenticity and a texture that I've never heard or seen before. So we were very married to it from an early stage. Anybody else? Yes, please. The thing that struck me in the movie was the metaphor of the dandelion, and that goes, that runs throughout the film. And then um, I remember the, um, where they use the pluck of the dandelion as a metaphor for like the bomb. Can you speak to the choice of using that as a metaphor in the film? Спершу, ці кульбабки були для мене лише символом крихкісті, символом вразливості. This was, uh, they were just like, for me personally, they were just a symbol of um, uh, brittle, uh, brittleness. Але коли ми знімали Мій улюблений епізод, він повинен випадати, він повинен випадати ці першу тільки, 
but my uh, when you were filming my favorite episode in the film, when slowly, slowly, uh, each one of these uh, little uh, parachutes were falling down. Absolutely, it's a good thing. I forgot about the war, I forgot about everything. Then the phone rang. И тоді загрукнув мій друг, база якого щойно зазнала ритмого обстрілу, і він їхав до мене за все спокійно. І він не був ще друзі, були вбиті, і він щойно відкопував від тіла руками. His um, closest friends were just killed, and he was digging them out with his bare hands. Since then, Candelians became um, very prickly for me in the cacti. I thought there was more. Anybody else? Yes, sir. You touched on it, Jay, and what Salva just said. You could feel it. You could feel what he was saying. And so they experience process trauma by filming this. Brendan process trauma by, you know, working with the 500 hours of footage. How will we as an audience process this when we watch the film and, and feel the same emotions that Salva and Andre feel? That's a fantastic question. You should be sitting up here. <laughs> So we actually hope that our, our movie will be healing. So we we could have um, we could have filmed something ugly, but all the time we were turning away from ugly and trying to film something beautiful. Ми знімали про те, що в день не складно налякати, але неможливо заборонити їм життя. Our film was about the fact that it's possible to scare people, but not possible to uh, forbid them from living. Що легко руйнувати щось красиве, але неможливо прибрати красу з цього світу. That it's possible to destroy something beautiful, but it's not possible to Remove beautiful from this world. The porcelain is easy to break, but it's not possible to destroy it. You can burn it, but it will never burn. It can be rebuilt. I really hope that this movie will bring um, hope with this. Dr. Lewis, would you like to tackle that question as well? Yeah, um, what do I past, our memories, our connections and relationships. And what I'm hearing from, from all of you, which has just been really beautiful to hear, is this radical openness towards the good and the bad, looking at this closely and unflinchingly, accepting everything that you're confronted with. And I see that as an intrinsic part of you from home. It involves opening to all of it and not avoiding those aspects that are difficult or hard to look at in ourselves, in the world, in other people. So I would, from, from what you're describing, that is part of your own processes that's conveyed in the film and I would imagine that that message is very clearly conveyed to the audience, the people watching this, and 
We didn't have a choice, we have to be very efficient um, making this move. This sounds like such an amazing process for all of you. It's been quite moving to hear about it. Yes, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't exist without this experience. Thank you. I wanted Yeah, let me repeat that question. Uh, you were asking about it's this idea of catharsis with Ellen's story and putting that out into the world. And think about that in a couple of different ways. I think there can be this cathartic expression, which can be human um, almost immediately. Um, and expressing that from the heart, something deep to your own experience and sharing that with others. I also think of that as a right? not necessarily a single event, but I think of you know, the process of making a film, which involves going through a lot of narrative history, kind of explicit, a lot of biographical material, I think of the process of revisiting it in a creative way, and then laughing at it over time. It's sort of, it's sort of this ongoing um, process. Uh, it, it probably doesn't end. Right? That, that, that probably continues to go forward. And, now you're at the stage of sharing this with other people, which is also part of that process. So I, I think there are elements there that are different and are immediately healing, certainly, potentially. Um, but I also see that as a longer journey and existing part of that. In my experience, it actually didn't help me to share my trauma with others. So sometimes, so when I was feeling like things are going terrible, I was feeling terrible, and at physiological level, I feel like, psychological level, I feel like I was feeling um, falling apart. At some point, I would pick up a phone and call my family, who went up with me, and I would tell them, okay, I just can barely go on. And, but this didn't help me. So I had to actually do something. So for example, when I would pick up camera, or I would go and work with military, train with military, or I would go with Slava and start filming. Only after that, after these activities, I felt I felt better. I felt that okay, I myself I'm being myself again. Everything will be all right. That makes a lot of sense to me. And uh, what I'm hearing with that is bringing um, me into some of the therapies for the trauma, which are exposure based. They involve really. The movie begins, it's a very difficult continuation. It's just oriented and very easy. But not easy, you realize it's immediately. And also, there are just all of these other levels of processing that is working and deteriorating. There's there's the explicit um, memories of experiences, but there's this other level of creative process and connection. And I imagine that would have 
afforded an opportunity for many other ways to process some really difficult and traumatic material. So when I feel like my stress is really at a deep level, you have to address it from very different angles, from many different angles. Yeah, but that's exactly right. And yet, your stories are a real testament to that. Thank you to all of you for being here. Dr. Lewis, Andre, and Katrina, thank you so much for your work here. Uh, Slava, Brandon, thank you for this film. And on behalf of American Cinematographer and Candon, thank all of you for being here for, with us today. And um, please go out and see this film and uh, tell others about it. Thank you.